So, please excuse the crudity of the model. Didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it, but we've got a uh, typical three-bladed wind turbine here. Doesn't matter how many blades. And we're going to calculate the energy or the power in the wind that can go through a particular diameter wind turbine. So in this particular case, I've drawn like a volume, a circular volume of air here. So we've got the area and uh, D is the distance, uh, the basically the thickness of the air there. And then assuming that passes through the wind turbine. Now we have to go back, as I said, to first principles here, kinetic energy. You almost certainly learned this formula in uh, like first year basic science in like high school science, you'd learn this, wouldn't you? Kinetic energy equals half mv squared, or half times the mass uh, times the velocity squared. Basic physics. So we actually could jump directly from this kinetic energy uh, formula to this industry standard formula here that's used in all of the wind power uh, energy industry. It's it's the formula that explains it all. But I thought we'd just uh, derive this very quickly. So you can skip this bit if you don't care about uh, transforming that into the, where this actual formula comes from. So anyway, let's go. The volume of air inside here is the area, square area, times the depth here. And the air density uh, is a rho, that's not a p, that's actually the symbol rho, is uh, the mass divided by the volume here. I've got volume is just VL there to differentiate it from velocity, which is uh, V. So we can just rearrange that. Mass equals uh, rho times the volume. Now, we can take our kinetic energy formula up here, and instead of uh, having the mass, we can substitute in rho times the volume, times v squared. So it's the same formula, we've just uh, substituted in some equivalent stuff. Now, of course, the uh, volume of this is the area times the depth. So we can just change that from uh, volume to area times the depth, easy. And the depth here, this can be replaced by velocity times time. So we're just substituting in just to get this to pop out the other end. Now, because we've got two velocity components in this formula, V squared becomes V cubed. And here's the last step, power, because we want power, not kinetic energy. Power is kinetic energy divided by time. So if we divide uh, this uh, part here by time, the t's cancel out and bingo, you're left with power equals half times rho, which is the air density, times the area, times velocity cubed. Bingo, that is our industry standard wind formula that applies to all wind turbines, and it actually applies to uh, liquids as well. But anyway, um, because density is just air or a liquid or whatever it is, whether or not you have a like a uh, water turbine, for example, uh, you're gonna be using uh, the same formula. But this applies to windmill. This is the industry standard formula. This is how much power is available in a given volume of air to feed in to your turbine. You can't get any more than that. Now we have to take a look at this row figure, which is the air density, and this changes with uh, temperature. And you can go look this up in various uh, charts at a standard 20 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, it is actually 1.2041 kilograms per cubic meter. So if we actually put this into the formula and let's take a standard 10 meter per second wind speed, which is about 20, little over 20 uh, miles an hour, that's uh, pretty much where the peak of most wind turbines will be designed, pretty much a standard calculation figure in the industry. So 10 meters per second, uh, power equals a half times 1.2041 times, let's put per square meter, so one square meter um, times uh, the velocity, 10 meters per second cubed here, and that gives us 602 watts maximum ideal. This is the maximum ideal power that you can actually have in a 10 meter per second wind at 20 degrees C at that air density. So anytime you see any marketing claim whatsoever for any sort of uh, wind turbine that can get greater than 602 watts per square meter area, you know they're full of crap because that would require over unity, i.e. getting more power out than what you put in from the wind. In this case, you're not putting it in, the wind's already there, you're just extracting from the wind. There's no way you can possibly get more than 602 watts uh, per square meter at that particular air density. Now, as it turns out, even the most ideal wind turbine can't achieve this figure, why? 
Well, not only because uh, like there's the like the turbine hubs in the way and things like that, and the blades don't capture you know precisely 100% of the wind. They act as airfoils, and that increases the effective capture area. That's why a lot of uh, you know your commercial, huge commercial ones are this uh, three-bladed design like this. It's kind of like an optimized uh, design for this type of wind speed and capture area and efficiency and and things like that. Now there's this thing called Betz's Law. So there was this smart dude called Albert Betz early last uh, century who uh, came up with Betz's Law. He wasn't the, I think somebody else came up with it at the same time. But anyway, it's called Betz's Law. It states that you can't extract more than 59.3% of the kinetic energy going into a wind turbine or a uh, fluid uh, turbine. Uh, that is because when it actually uh, flows into it like this, it actually spreads out. Um, it can't capture it all and that uh, there's a, you know, he's analysed all this and figured out that that is the absolute maximum figure that you can extract from it. So anyone claiming to extract more than 59.3% of uh, this 602 watts per square metre at uh, 20 degrees at that air density is violating Betz's law. And I believe nobody's actually done it yet. There's a few people who claim that you can actually do it if you uh, also harness uh, thermal type stuff with it and other things. And this applies, uh, by the way, Betz's law applies to open frame uh, wind turbines like this, ones that don't have the frame around them. And all the designs that have actually tried this to actually put, like, in, in, in case them in, t in tunnels and things like that, to try and get around uh, Betz's law, they've all sort of come a gutsa in practice. It's great in theory, and apparently you can actually do some simulations to prove you can get better, but when you try and do it in practice, Betz's law wins every time. So applying Betz's law to our maximum ideal figure here, times 59.3%, gives us 357 watts per square metre. And this is actually called the power density, which again is an industry uh, standard figure that you'll find in the data sheet for wind turbines. And here's one of the data sheets for a huge uh, 100 kilowatt uh, or I think 200 kilowatt wind turbine, which shows it's just over 300 uh, watts per square meter. And that's, you know, the, typically the best you'll get is like 80 to 85 percent. Or because as I said, you know, you've got the hub in there and you've got other sort of, you know, losses to do with the blade design and things like that. But, you know, a good wind turbine is around about 80 percent of Betz's law, not the actual maximum power. Hello.